So Trev Zero here in the Red House, and we have a, a problem. This is my water-cooled LED strip, and I bumped it while I was taking out some plants, and uh, the the start it just popped off, like these water blocks just popped off the thing, and you got a little bit of leakage as well. It put some strain on the on the hose, so I had to. That's why I always have a shutoff valve nearby. Uh, I was able to shut it off, but I'm, I'm taking it apart now. Uh, this is actually not a devastation, it's a, an opportunity. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let's bring it inside and I'll show you. So another thing about the, uh, the lights is the, the thermal adhesive on the lights themselves started okay, the coming off. And that's definitely not good. That one came off. This one came off just with a little force, so that's definitely not good. Um, but we have a solution. My good friend, uh, Malcolm, was kind enough to prototype me a water block with screws where I can screw about three LEDs in, and there's some aluminum uh, tubing going through them to cool them and so I'm going to mount three of these lights on this and we're going to test it out. So the reason this thing failed and they popped off if I if I try and move this it's actually on there really well but this is so thin this aluminum panel is so thin if I bend it which it bends quite easily, then these things just pop off like that. So I don't know if I can demonstrate, but it bends really well. And you can kind of hear a little popping. So just in the course of like moving this thing around, there we go, see? just pops right off. That one's on there good, but I mean as soon as I bend it around there it'll just come off. This new one, very very well done, very precise in, in uh, the placement of the LED modules and I love the use of the torque screws. They just went right in and there's no way I'm gonna be able to bend this. I mean look how thick that piece is. And I believe overall, I'm going to have to redo the math because it's been a while, but this is actually cheaper to make than this is because this required so many heat sinks and water blocks, made it pretty costly, the cost just added up, but this is not, I mean, this is just made out of two pieces with two pipes and it's actually cheaper in in terms of parts to make so um, I've got these mounted in but I do not have thermal compound on the the last two so I'm not gonna light them up but what I am gonna do is I'm going to cap this off I've just got some tube and I'll just loop them both uh, pipes together and go out and do a, a water test probably tomorrow because it's dark right now but I'll leave this for now, and we'll be back when we've got some more, uh, when we've got some daylight, and when we've got some uh, thermal compound to really mount those modules. We'll see you in a bit. So I've got this uh, all piped up and uh, hooked up in the greenhouse, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this knob, turn it, uh, and activate it. They're not plugged into electricity, so I'm going to just check for leaks, make sure that no water's coming out of uh, the input and output, and uh, make sure it, it all works before I hook it up to power. So let's turn it on. Just a little bit. And it looks pretty good so far. No leaks. Yeah, 
pretty dry. Okay, let me turn it on. Increase the flow rate. So that's all the flow. And no leaks. So that's pretty good. Now um, we'll hook it up to power and see how, uh, see, measure the temperature. So just for reference, our temperature that we're measuring on the top of this is about 21. And we'll hook up power and, uh, and then uh, measure it as it's going through. The, the water temperature is probably around 19. At least that's what the reservoir indicates. So let's hook this up real quick. Um, all right, so we got power going through it now. Let's give it a bit. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it got cooler at the moment just because our water reservoir is cooler, so this is about 20 versus 21, and it's even cooler, that's coming right out of the ground. So it's getting warmer. Give that a few minutes and uh, check the temperature. We're about 27 right now, 28 and climbing. Feels a little warm. Not much though. That ends cool. Are all the lights on? Yeah, the lights are all on. One, two, three. Um. So. This is great um, for a number of reasons. In a geothermal water greenhouse, I can. This water is going through the earth, being stored in that tank. So I'm actually this this l these lights on are during the day to compensate for any lack of sunlight that I get. Like today, it's raining outside, so. I have clouds, the lights on to compensate for the lack of sunlight for the plants that need it. Um, LEDs are only about 15% efficient, right? So the rest of the electricity being used is going to generate heat instead of light. Um, so we don't want that in the daytime because we have all the heat we need, um, usually. Even even with the limited amount of sunlight we get in here, it's enough to generate enough heat for the plants that I'm growing. So about 15 Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit is just fine for tomatoes or any of the plants that I grow. So I don't need the heat that it's generating. So what I'm doing is I'm sucking the heat away into the water, transferring it the energy into the water, and then storing it until nighttime when I really do need it because I don't have any sunlight to warm up my greenhouse. So this is why I'm doing this, to transfer the heat to the place where I need it at the time I need it, instead of having it being essentially wasted during the daytime. So I don't run my lights at night. If I did, um, any excess heat that they're generating now, right? The, the, light, the, the heat that I'm not sucking up, the 34 degrees Celsius is is going to also heat the air as well. So if I did run this at night, it'd be just fine. But at least it's not going to be wasted heat uh, during the day. At least most of it's going to be channeled into the ground. Now, let's do an experiment where it is 35 right now, 36 or so. 36, we're going to shut off the water flow. And it should heat up a lot quicker now. So 
so it's already 37. Uh, it's quite unstable temperature. So we'll give that uh, another few minutes and see just how high it goes. So it's been maybe a minute. It's already climbed up to 43 and and climbing. So you can you can definitely see a an, a, a, an improvement when um, the water is flowing through it when it's actually being cooled by the water. So let's flip it on again and let's see how quick it cools. So flipped on and Down to 38, 39, 38. But it's, yeah, it's, huh. Let's let that cool for a few and then uh, we'll see if the t temperature goes down. So it's been running for a few minutes. It's actually increased in heat, so our turning on and off the flow really didn't do much. It wasn't done heating up to begin with. So we're getting around 60 right now. And might be stabling out. I'll still give it a few minutes. Um, maybe run this for an hour or two and just it's quite hot to the touch but that's not uh, abnormal for these lights so I'll, I'll keep that running and uh, we'll see what happens in, in uh, maybe an hour or so there was a, a minor problem. The reason why it was getting that hot, it was very strange. I, I, I couldn't reconcile the reason why it was getting that hot if there was water flowing through it. I mean, without, it's about that hot if there was no water, if it was just like passive cooling, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. So it turns out there was a, the water wasn't flowing through it. This was correct, but it was going through this other radiator and there might be a clog or something in there. The water was not getting through all the way up to here. So this is the outlet. And I can definitely like pinch, I could feel the pressure. So it's, that water's definitely going through now. And you can tell by reading it, look how cool it is. And if we sit here for minutes and minutes, like it's still cool to the touch. This was warm up until the point I bypassed the heat exchanger and went directly uh, to the outlet uh, up here uh, that goes back to the reservoir. So it was warm to the hand while I was doing that and now it's cold to the touch, which is pretty awesome. And it's been on for you know, several minutes now. So I'm pretty happy with it right now. Um, water's flowing through it, um, so I think we can do our test properly this time. So it's holding pretty steady at 19.6. Let's turn off the water flow. Measure it. So already we can see it going up. And it's just going to keep on going up and up and up until it reaches, you know, 50, uh, close to 60, what we were seeing before. 
already almost 21. Let's let it get to about 22 and then we'll reverse it. We'll turn on the water again. See if it cools back down to 19, which it should. Um, by the way, if we were letting this get up to like, you know, 80, 90, 100 C, this would be very bad because the boil, the water would start to boil, create tons of pressure, and probably these are going to pop off. We're not going to let it get that hot. It's 22 now, so let's reactivate the flow and see if it goes down. So it's dropping. Look at that. Simply amazing. How well this is working. I'm amazed. Thank you, Michael, Malcolm, for uh, making this for me. I'm going to have you make me some more so I can put the rest of these broken lights on them and get some lights on this other side for my tomatoes. Replace this one, this old one, that's already had, you know, a heat sink pop off in the middle. That's no good. So I'm going to replace all these with these water cooled strips. So, incredible. I'm. Wow. Yeah. And how, how much time was that? A minute? It's already cooler than it was before. So that's pretty awesome. Just amazing. So, yeah. Uh, if you're interested in these, um, let's talk. Uh, shoot me a message. Um, maybe Michael can make a bunch of them. We can uh, all have them. So that would be great. All right. This has been Trip Zero with the uh, water-cooled LED strip. It's been a long process uh, getting these built and and, uh, and getting them here so I can test, but it's been more than worth it. These are awesome. So, trip zero out.